Week 10, Miami Dolphins heading over to La LA to face the Rams. Let's break it down. What is up, Finn fans? Little disclaimer. I told you guys I was sick. I didn't make a video on Wednesday, and I thought I was getting better on Thursday, but now I am congested and nasally and sneezing like crazy, so I do apologize if I sound like hot garbage and if I sneeze a lot. I'll cut it out, but I'm probably going to sneeze a lot, but hey, I ain't taking off. Plain and simple. Maybe this defense might take off in the second half, but your boy ain't taking off, so we're going to be looking at this Rams game. Injury report, breakdown, <laughs> PFF, five things. Five things are a little different this time. Some things are still in there because some things are fundamental to football, and there's some things that I wish the Dolphins would do more to win games. Let me give you my prediction. So let's jump into this, and we're going to start with the injury report. Now, with the injury report, I couldn't get the, the Rams, for some reason, injury report. Normally, it's listed where it's like the Dolphins and then their opponent below it. So, the, like, the color and everything and the font and everything's similar. But for some reason, the Rams injury report was not listed with the Miami Dolphins injury report. So the Rams injury report looks like this. It's a little different. But they had uh, two did not practices in Rob Haven Havenstein, their offensive lineman, and Neville Gallimore, that name should sound familiar to you. He was with the Miami Dolphins this offseason. Uh, those two guys did not practice, and then you have the do not practice to limited was Cam Curl, uh, who's the safety, Kevin Dotson, their offensive lineman, and Demarcus, uh, Demarcus Robinson, their wide receiver, and then everyone else is full. So I could really kind of just... But real quick... These two guys right here, Jonah Jackson and Steve Avila, are coming off of IR. So this is their limited and then full coming off of IR. So I will talk about them in a hot two of a second. Then we have the Miami Dolphins. Yes, it is ginormous. I get that. Down here at the bottom, you see River Craycraft. There's a full. Uh, you see Clay's Campbell, Jordan Poyer had rest. You also see Toronto Armstead uh, limited. So let me just kind of make it. A little bit neater here so i'm not so cut off there we go okay that's a little better so if you look here you see on the top you see d eskridge and tyreek hill popped up on a did not practice i'm not worried about tyreek hill and obviously d es eskridge uh we we have guys coming back tyreek hill i'm not too worried about it it's a wrist i'll be shocked if he doesn't play then you have uh austin jackson is the one that is interesting because he went from he did not practice with the knee and i talked to you guys yesterday uh about kendall lamb even though i kept calling him kendall fuller because again nasal uh outside of that everyone's just limited and again again if you're less than 100 percent participating so if you normally do 50 reps and you only do 45 reps they have to put you down as limited but limited is literally everyone else from storm duck julian hill javon holland ala gingold robert jones cater kohu patrick mcmorris emmanuel agua zach sealer and cam smith now cam smith popped up there he banged up his knee trainers came saw him like hey you're all right kind of got up ran put pressure on it i'm hearing nothing to worry about with cam smith sealer like i said is going to play emmanuel ogba he has a tear in his bicep he's going to play patrick morris is coming off of ir again all this stuff i talked about in yesterday's video go back and watch if you want should good be good to go same thing with cater kohu robert jones should be good to go alec ingold dealing with the calf should be good to go uh javon holland i would uh, maybe he plays. I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't. Drilling Hens, Stone, Storm Duck, and Teron Armstead, they will probably go. <clears throat> Hopefully that explains all that for you. Okay, so that's the injury report. And like I said, Jonah Jackson, Steve Avila coming off of IR. We'll see how that all pans out for them. Then let's go into the breakdown. We'll start with the Miami Dolphins defense. The Miami Dolphins have the seventh best defense. You wouldn't think it after the past two days games. I'm going to talk about that. They have the fourth best passing defense. They have the 13th best rushing defense. 
their rushing defense actually did pretty well for the past two games against two very good rushing teams. They are uh, 17th in scoring defense. That went up. Sacks, they are 30th. They have 10 sacks. You have to do better than that. Third down defense, they are sixth. They used to be number one. And then takeaways, they are 27th. They need to force more, force more turnovers. You flip it around. You look at the Rams offense. They are the 18th total offense. Passing is ninth. Rushing is 16th. So that bodes well for Miami, but they are getting Sealer back. Scoring offense, they are 21st. That bodes well for Miami. Uh, sacks allowed is eighth. That doesn't bode well for Miami, but again, Get some pressure on there. Third down offense, 23rd. That bodes well. And then giveaways is eighth. They don't turn the ball over a lot. But I will have something about that that I will talk about. And then we flip it around. You talk about the Miami Dolphins offense versus their defense. Now, the Dolphins is the 20th ranked total offense. Uh, and if you notice, I'm going to go down to scoring is 31st. It used to be 32nd. That 14 and a half sucks because the past two games we have scored 27 points. Now that Tua Tonga Valoa is back. Uh, passing, 24th. Again, if Tua didn't get hurt, he played the four games that he missed. I bet you all of these stats would probably be top 15. What are you going to do? Uh, rushing, ninth. Sacks allowed, 14th. Third down offense, 14th. And giveaways, 8th. Nine giveaways. And then we look at their defense. Their defense isn't very good. Total defense is 24th. Passing defense, 23rd. Rushing defense, 24th. Scoring defense, 22nd. We should be able to score and move the ball on them. Sacks, 14th. They do get some pressure. I will talk about that. Third down defense, 14th as well. And their takeaways are 13th with 11 takeaways. It's another situation where we are facing a bad defense where offense should do the job and our off our defense is facing a okay offense and i'm gonna get to that but now we go to my favorite part of the previews and that is pfff bom, 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 bom. now we have uh we're starting with the miami dolphin offense we'll scroll down a little bit you got tua you got devon a chan uh i would love to see now it sucks because moster is a good running back but his fumble itis i i want to see Jalen Wright get more carries. You got Waddle and Hill. These guys have low PFF grades, but again, I think that has a big portion to do with the fact of Tua not being there for four weeks. I could see River Craycraft coming in here and Odell as well. There's like a big old rotation in that slot position. You see Toronto Armstead and Brewer are our top guys. Austin Jackson won't be in there. He might. I probably he probably won't. These interior guys are all right, and then you see John U. Smith is getting up there. He's now the fifteenth best tight end. Our offense is not the problem. We scored twenty seven points last week. Seven uh, offensive drives we scored on five of them. The week before, eight offensive drives we scored on five of them. The offense is not the problem. You look at their defense over here. It's not too great. This is what worries me right here. They're two rookies and verse and Fisk. Brandon Fisk. I wanted the dolphins to draft. Hey, what are you going to do? And verse who are one of the dolphins to draft. What are you going to do? He went way header header way ahead of where the dolphins were taking these guys force a lot of pressure. Nothing worries me about the rest of their defense. It's these two guys right here. And will they be facing these two guys? Or will they be on the opposite side? I doubt they'll put them against Teron Armstead. I expect them to go on this side. They worry the crap out of me, and it is to his blind side. Outside of that, their defense doesn't really worry me at all. I would just run it this way. All game, just run it this way. Don't let Tua get hurt. And then we flip it over to the defense. Try not to sneeze. Okay, I'm fine. We look at the defense. You look at their offense. Like I said, they have two interior guys right now. They have uh, Dietrich and Limmer as their guys. But uh, Steve Avila, who is their center, and Jonah Jackson, will, who's their left tackle, coming back off of IR. Uh, Puka and Cooper Cup, they worry the crap out of me because of our secondary. I think that this will be Kato Kohu again, but again, look at this. People said he's washed. He's the second best corner. Stafford isn't a mobile quarterback, so we don't have to worry about him running. We do have, should get pressure on him, and they have the 30th, or not 30th, they're, they're 20 something best rush offense. Not too worried here. We get Sealer back. We have Campbell in there, the fourth best defensive lineman. Chop is starting to come into it. He's getting pressure. He had a good game last week against the Bills. Want to see something there. Marcus May, 
better tackling. Jordan Poyer, you're breaking my heart. Anthony Walker Jr. is now the starter over David Long Jr. because David Long Jr. struggled by City against the Colts there. So we'll see how all this pans out. But if we can get pressure on Stafford, I think that will really make a big, big difference. So that is your PFF. Now we go into the five things that the Miami Dolphins need to do if they want to beat this Rams team and hopefully start a three-game winning streak against three. Well, not I wouldn't say the Rams are inferior, but the next two teams in the Raiders and the Patriots are inferior opponents. Start that winning streak. Go into uh, the Patri- uh, the Packers game on Thanksgiving night, five and six with the potential to get to 500 before the Jets come to Miami, and then we can hopefully get over 500. But... I'm getting ahead of myself. Five things, not most important, least important. It's just, again, I'm doing research on these guys, things I, the Dolphins didn't do right, this, this, and that. So, number one, 60-minute defense. This shouldn't be a shocker to anyone. 60-minute defense against the Arizona Cardinals in the first half. We allowed seven points and 112 yards. That is it. In the second half, we allowed, what, 24 points? not really 20 something points and like 300 and something yards in the second half atrocious against the bills we allowed 10 points in the first half 118 point 10 points 118 yards we are shutting them down in the first half and in the second half they just disappear now obviously going into halftime the opposite opponent and their offense is going to adjust and scheme for it do that because we, the past two games that are pivotal, and if our defense could have just stepped up and made one stop, one flipping, blipping stop, because your offense gave you 27 points, your offense gave you the lead, the offense was consistently answering, it's like the flip side of the four weeks before that, if we could have got one stop on defense, we would have won those two games, and where would we would be sitting, we'd be sitting at four and four right now but we're not. We're sitting at two and six. So if and buts and all that other stuff, 60-minute defense. I don't expect you to be perfect. You'll see in my score prediction, I don't expect you to be perfect. I don't expect you to shoot a shutout. I don't expect you to hold them to nine points or whatever. I don't expect that. I just expect some stops, and especially in pivotal situations. Hopefully with Sealer back, we'll get more pressure up the middle, and we get Stafford down. But as of right now, we need a whole game on that defense. Number two, continue the run game. We're facing the 24th ranked rush defense. They allow 135.1 yards per game. Our run game was going off against Buffalo, against the Cardinals. Our run game is taking off and doing really, really well. Continue it. Continue feeding these guys. Continue feeding the hot hand. Don't stop taking the ball away from the hot hand when it, whether it's H and Jalen Wright, whoever. If a guy comes in, he's playing really well, don't take him off the field. Continue to feed him the ball. If it's a second and one, feed him the ball. Like I understand, oh, second one, they're pressing the box, they're probably expected to run. Cool. Still run it at them. Because they've been struggling to stop your running all game. Continue to run the ball, eat the clock up, keep the offense on the other side with Nakua and Cooper Cup and Robinson and keep them all on the sideline for the love of God and just run, 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 run. Tire out their defense and and win the flipping game. So run the ball. Continue running the ball. Number three, no mistakes. These two games against Buffalo and Arizona were lost on the defense and making mistakes. Those are the two biggest things that lost us these past two games. With the Arizona Cardinals, it was the safety and it was the fumble from Raheem Mostert. That's what lost us the game. Now, obviously, the defense didn't really stop anything in the fourth quarter. I think they gave up like 200-something yards in two series and five minutes and on the last one. But those two fumbles hurt us and lost us the game you go to last week we were marching down the field without that Raheem Mostert fumble we probably score and go up a certain amount of points and instead of driving down the field and scoring a touchdown to tie the game with a minute 42 left we're probably going down this field scoring a touchdown to take a bigger lead in the game and probably putting the game out of reach we cannot have these mistakes whether it comes fumbles missed plays like the missed tackles or the blown coverages or the miscommunications 
and missed opportunities. No mistakes. From here on out, our playoffs start today. You want any shot at making the playoffs? I know people playoffs. We're two and six. Can't lose, especially to, especially Monday night. I was gonna say tonight. Number four, force turnovers. Now this is where I go into talking about Matthew Stafford. Now Matthew Stafford, their offensive line is is decent. Is pretty good. It's decent. Some people have them ranked twenty. Some people have them ranked in the teens. Their offensive line is pretty good. But Matthew Stafford, I looked up a stat because I was like, is he turning the ball over? And he has like, I think like five or seven interceptions. His turnover worthy plays, which means that his his passes, you know, are in bad situations and could become interceptions or whatever. Like he doesn't put the ball where it should be. Turnover worthy play, essentially. His turnover worthy play percentage. So they take the amount of passes he's attempt. And they divide it by how many turnover worthy plays he had, and you get a percentage. That's how percentages work. It's number one in the NFL among quarterbacks with 9.6. He puts the ball in precarious situations. We don't turn the we don't get a lot of turnovers. Like last week we got lucky with the one with uh Coleman and Jalen Ramsey snatching that ball out. We don't do that a lot. But we're facing a quarterback who puts that ball in situations he shouldn't, shouldn't shouldn't uh and we need to turn the ball over this is a game where the, i need to see the defense wake it up please for the love of everything holy so we'll get a turnover and if we're getting turnovers number five on my list get some sacks for the love of god sealers back chop you got your first sack last week against a very good quarterback and josh allen continue the production continue playing hard get some sacks like i said the rams offensive line was banged up they're getting three guys back in Jonah Jackson, who's coming returning off of IR, Steve Avila returning off of IR, and Joe uh, Noteboom. He's also potentially coming back from IR. So they're getting their offensive linemen back off of IR, but how rusty will they be? Can we take advantage of that? Can we get the pressure in the certain areas and situations we can? We are facing a quarterback for the first time in a couple weeks, in three week games. Holy crap, I just realized that who's not a mobile quarterback. We faced Richardson, we faced Murray, and we faced Josh Allen. We are now facing Stafford. He's not a mobile quarterback. If you blitz him, if you get pressure back there, if you get pressure up the middle from Sealer, you should sack him. He's not a mobile quarterback. He's not going to run. He's not going to extend plays. You just have to get after him and take advantage of their offensive line coming back from being extremely banged up. So get some sacks and get off the field but also get some tags, get off the field for 60 minutes, not just in the first quarter, but also offense. You, know, you rack up that score and we go into half up like 24 to nothing because our defense is or 24 to seven because our defense is doing what it normally does. Then all of a sudden we continue to score. That score becomes an insurmountable. So please looking at this game. I said last week, if the Dolphins lose that game, uh, their season's done. I still kind of feel that. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I think it'll be an utter shock and awe if they make the playoffs. And if they do, that is a uh, detriment. I don't think that's the word I want to use. But it's all praise to Mike McDaniel, who should keep his job but still fire the GM. I don't care what happens with us at the end of the year. Chris Greer needs to go. Um, but this is it. Like I said, the playoffs start, man. You If you run the table, it ain't happening. You can get to 11 and wins, you go 11 and six. You'll definitely get a wild card spot at 11 and six. You ain't beating the Bills because the Bills are facing, you know, I think they face another three <coughs> tough opponents in Detroit. I think they face uh, Kansas City and the 49ers. So you ain't, they'll, they'll go 12 and five. That's my prediction for them. 11 and six will get you in the playoffs, maybe a six seed. So are they going to run the table and win the rest of the games? No. It's not happening, but you got to win this one. This one, I'm not worried about the offense. I think the offense is going to score. They're over in LA. Yes, they have to go over to the West Coast, but the last time we got to the West Coast, you know, Dolphin fans take over that stadium. Not a knock on the Rams and Chargers fans, but you guys don't really show up, and the opponent, opponents fans do, and Dolphins tend to take over that stadium. So I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about the offense. I'm worried about Puka and Koopa Cup. Koopa, Cooper Cup, what can we do there? (sighs) 
You know what I'm going to say. I don't want to say it, but you know what I'm going to say. I have no expectations for this game, but I have the Dolphins winning 30 to 20. I I have no qualms that they'll score points. Like I said, their defense isn't great. I have no qualms that the Dolphins offense will score points. Uh, and like I said, the, I don't expect the Dolphin defense to sh- pitch a shutout. I have the Rams scoring 20 points. But hopefully they do what I say where they get going to halftime with a big enough lead that it's insurmountable. And yes, the Dolphins will give up scores, but at the end of the day, the Dolphins will continue to score and win by 10. That's the way I have it. Comment below. Let me know what you think. What's your score prediction? What are your five things? And other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to make a video tomorrow recapping the games that we saw. Um, You want to root against, look at the way the playoff standings are and just root against the people above the Dolphins. Like the fact that um, the Bengals lost helped us. So you want to root against Tennessee. You want to root against the Jets, the Colts, the Broncos, the Chargers. Those are the teams you want to root against. So you want the Bills to win. You want the Cardinals to win. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll recap all the games that happened yesterday or tomorrow. I don't want to say yes. Again, I'm not here. I apologize for messing up words. I'll see you guys tomorrow. But like usual, stay classy. FN's out.